Hey, I'm Daniel Norton. Welcome to my studio here in New York. Today we're going to talk about flags. I often say that the reason why we light as photographers is for control. And what better way to control light than to control where it falls? And that's really what a flag is primarily going to be used for. We often talk about using reflectors uh, or, you know, soft boxes and grids and these kind of things to kind of put our light where we want it. Well, the flag is going to help us keep the light away from where we don't want it. I've got my friend Paulina coming. We're going to just use one light, an umbrella, and a flag to create a variety of images to kind of show you that subtle changes in how you let the light spill or where you let the light fall will really change your portrait. So for the purposes of this discussion, a flag is going to be something that's going to allow us to block the light. It could be an actual cutter or flag, which I'm going to use, or it could be a piece of black cardboard. The idea here is that we're going to use something to control where our light falls. So for this, I'm keeping it really simple. I'm going to use a Profoto B10 as my key and only light. Uh, I've got this small umbrella here, 33 inch translucent umbrella, and I'm using a flag from Matthews. Now, this kind of flag is not as portable as let's say the rest of the gear I'm using. So there's also things like fast flags from Westcott and road rags uh, from Matthews again, that are portable flags that you can take anywhere. Okay, I have Paulina here. Ooh. I was like, wear a super fancy dress so that I can make a headshot. This is, I'm notorious for that, right? <laughs> this is, I do this. No, but I want to talk a little bit about flags before we get started, because I do think it's one of those things I get a lot of questions about, but maybe people aren't fully following when or how you'd use them. Now, just keep in mind, of course, if you're on a budget or in a pinch, you could use something like a piece of black uh, foam board. The, the only issue with this is, even though it's black, it's also reflective. So it will actually not do as good a job of absorbing the light as a proper flag, which is made of dubatine. Dubatine also being flame retardant. So also useful if you use hot lights. And you've got this little peg on here. So if you're using a C-stand, for instance, it's very easy to manipulate your flag and get it exactly where you want it. So there's certain advantages to using like a proper flag like this, but a lot of this technique you could just do with foam board if need be. For now, I'm gonna move the flag out of the way though. Let's just start really simple. So. We've got our umbrella, I have my B10, I've got a white wall, right? It could really be anything. The advantage of our umbrella is that it's going to spread the light everywhere. <laughs> we'll pretend like that didn't happen. So <laughs> I'm gonna use a C-stand. I mean, obviously you could use whatever stand you have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go classic, as they say, butterfly lighting. We're just gonna put this kind of central on our subject. That's going to give us kind of nice, even light. And this is just a little baby umbrella that I could fit in my bag. Obviously, the larger the umbrella you have, the softer your light could be. Or if you're doing larger groups, that kind of stuff. This one's 33 inches. So I'm going to keep it not quite tilted down too far, like not, not flat to the floor, but a little tilt to it. Because remember that our, our umbrella is curved. So the light's going to hit it it's gonna come out like this, like downwards. It doesn't come straight out like it would, let's say, in a softbox. So we can afford to not tilt it as much to start with. We're gonna move it in. There's all kinds of books and diagrams and people that'll tell you the exact distance, but I feel like you'll just get used to it based on your kind of experience. But if you're not sure, modeling light will help, right? So this is the Profoto B10. I'm gonna come in here. I'll turn my modeling light on so I can see. And we can see that's pretty much lighting her up down to like her fingertips pretty evenly. Her legs and start, start to get darker, but I'm not gonna get that in the shot, so it's not really gonna matter. I am in capture one right now. Let's turn the camera on. Got my Nikon Z62 with the 24 to 70 on, the, on here. I'm set at, we're gonna set it 200 of a second, F8. 100 ISO, I'm in TTL, and we'll take our first test shot. This is just with the umbrella, nothing else. All right, nice and simple, right? Umbrella is gonna create a nice, simple, even light. It's a diffusive umbrella, so it's gonna be diffused. It has shape to the face, we have some shadow. That, to my taste, is a little bit dark. Like I always say, TTL is how you get there, it kind of gets started. I'm gonna switch it to manual. I'm just gonna add about two tenths to it. Also, now that I've seen this, I want to control my light a little differently. Now I'm going to consider my angle more. I'm going to tip it a little bit, not too much. 
And you notice I'm right under it. This is keeping the light central on the, on the subject. There we go. Nice, pretty. This is great for portraits, it's great for beauty, it's nice and simple. The background's gone this kind of grayish color, which works well with her dress. Plan that, as always. Boom, like that, nice and simple, right? Even, simple, that's an umbrella. Now, let's say we wanna mess around with this a little bit more. The umbrella doesn't give us a lot of options. Yeah, we can collapse it, we can move it in and out. So there's things you can do, but I find you still get light scattered everywhere. If you want to actually try to cut or control where the light's going to fall, you're going to want to use a flag, also sometimes called a cutter. So I've got this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it flat like this. And I'm going to bring it up. And we want to keep it out of our shot, obviously, but we don't want it to be too high because the light will creep past it. So I'm going to put it right in front of her. Now, if I put it too close to the light source, it's going to block the light and it's going to then stop light from hitting your head. It basically, what you're going to get is a line. So we want to move it forward so we can see that the umbrella light is going past and is going to fully light her head. So it needs to be just high enough so it's out of the shot. This, and this is going to help us get our background a little bit darker. It's not going to go black, not in this space. Well, I've got a white ceiling, white walls. We're pretty close, but this should give us a bit of a darker background. A little more control. We can see, compared to this, how our background has changed. We can also notice we've got a little, little bit more contrast on her. Looks good. Everything kind of pops in. It looks nice. If we wanted to get a bit of a gradient on the background, we can also pull that off by, by raising this slightly, right? That'll help feather off the light to the background a bit. And now we can see a bit of a gradient. You see how it's a little bit darker at the top and then it kind of drops down. That's also, that's actually kind of nice. Let's shoot a couple like that. Nice and easy. And guys, this would be true of a white wall, obviously, which is what we're using. But even if you had, let's say you're in an office or there's wallpaper back there or whatever, curtains, the same effect would happen, right? We're going to darken them slightly, add a little bit of gradient by having the flag there. Now, let's say we want to get even more gradient. If we move this back further, what we're going to get is, I'm going to lower it down. This is just barely, right? It's like at the top of her head. So I'm not going to get the top of her head in the shot. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Right, and now we've got even more, that was kind of an odd thing with your hand, sorry. Uh, you can see even more of a gradient there. I'll grab that at a bad moment. Okay. To me, that line's a little bit more abrupt. I kind of like this better. So that's not working as well for me, but you could see that you could do it either way. When one final thing we could do with the flag, which is in a pinch, we needed a dark background. We could actually use the flag as a background. Again, if I put a piece of foam core board back here, what would very likely happen is the light would reflect off of it and it would look like a beat up piece of foam core board. Whereas the flag is pretty much gonna absorb the light. And this flag is actually pretty beat up, so we might get a couple little marks on it, but all in all, it should come out pretty dark, even though it's pretty much right behind her. Okay. And now we've got a really good dark black background. Nice and simple. We can boom, make that snap. See, I did that snap my hands with it. And we can shoot a couple with the black background. Nice. I think my favorite is the gray. Oh yeah, that's a perfect shot right there. That's the best one. <laughs> yeah, I think I like the gray the best. So let's go back and end with the gray, because I like that the best. Yeah, so. And we know we made that by bringing the flag up and bringing it in front of her. Again, lowering it down, 
until it's just more or less above her head. By the way, I guess I should show you because I said that, but then I know that somebody in the comments right now writing, no, that wouldn't work. The umbrella is going to put the light everywhere. This is what would happen if you blocked too much light with the flag. Okay. I mean, maybe you like that. Some people like it, but that will happen if you block too much light. Because what's happening is the flag is flagging <laughs> the light, right? Which is then, of course, blocking from her head. So that comes down to, that's the distance of the flag to the light versus the subject, not the height that does that. And again, until you get a feel for it, you can always use the modeling light to see it. It definitely helps. We can see that. I'm not sure if it can be seen in the video or not, but I'll do it anyways. We can see that if we lower it, we can actually see the shadow up here right there. There we go. Bring it back. And again, I'm in TTL, guys, so the exposure has remained the same consistently. Let's shoot a few like this. Also take note that if you want to be a cool photographer, you should put your hand, your leg up on the C-stand like this. Patented move. Like that. Easy as that, right? Boom, boom, boom. Umbrella. Super simple. That looks like a nice like studio gray or fashion gray background, but it's just the white wall in the space because we're controlling the way the light falls. I'm using a few different things. Inverse square law, of course, right? We're always going to use that, but also the flag to control how much light is going past her and hitting that wall. You see that? Okay, so let's look at them. So this is always that moment, right? Where, where Dan gets nervous. So you remember you can push up and down like this. What we want to do here is we want to look, have her look at her and make sure we're getting shots that she's happy with. You know, that at least there's some shots there that, that she likes, or if she sees something she wants more of, um, that we can do them. Find out if she's going to come back or not. She definitely likes the one with the eyes closed. That was definitely the... I definitely like the gray. Yeah, the gray is nice, right? It, it, it's very um, monochromatic. I mean, it has that, like, because that, that dress is, it's, I guess, teal but it's kind of like an, a, a, a mid-tone. Yeah, it's right, pretty. Yeah. Very nice. I guess we'll keep you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so again, simple, right? Umbrella. You can look at it and be like, Okay, good, I can do all kinds of stuff with umbrellas, which is true, but there's a step beyond that. And for me, the step beyond that is controlling the light with flags. So whether you use cardboard or you use actual flags, portable ones, these ones, you know, think about how you can control where your light falls and you'll get a lot more variety and a lot more control over your images. I'll put Paulina's information in the description. You guys can follow her. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Martin Photographer, and I'll see you next time on set. If you wanna check out more videos like this one, click right here. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. See you next time.